Freddy Krueger with from Keeper Freddy here, and welcome to Ten Questions with the Pro. Today's guest is Brad Stuver, goalkeeper from New York City FC in the Major League Soccer. Stuver played college soccer for the Vikings and Cleveland State University, and now I'm so excited to be chatting with him today. Brad, thank you for being on the show. How are you? Oh, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on, and Thanks looks like you really on. did your homework. Yeah. Um, okay, are you ready to get into the questions? Absolutely. Why did you become a goalie? So I started off being a goalkeeper because of my older brother. Uh, him and his friends would always play soccer in our backyard. And the only time that I was ever allowed to play was if I was the goalkeeper. So I always wanted to play with them. So I jumped in goal and just kind of snowballed from there. And I continued to play throughout club and high school and college and now as a pro. Yeah, I started off the same way. Like I would need to, I was a field player until I was six. Then the guy, then the I, I was on bench and then I said, I really want to play coach. And then he just threw me in goal and I played along. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's good to play the field as well. I mean, I played field in high school as well as goalkeeper. Uh, I mean, anymore being a goalkeeper, you kind of need to be good with your feet as well. So. Yeah. That's a very important part of being a goalkeeper. Um, what motivates you to keep training hard to maintain being a professional goalie? Uh, I know that uh, a player's career is very short. Uh, you're not able to play soccer for your entire life. So uh, the motivation to just play as long as possible. And uh, I love the game with all my heart. I've been playing since I was four years old and uh, I can't imagine my life without it. So I just go in every day and cherish that I can get to kick a soccer ball around every day. Yeah. I always want to kick a soccer ball around every day too. Um, yeah. What steps help you achieve the ability to become a professional goalkeeper? So growing up, I played travel soccer when I was younger. I moved on to play club soccer. I played ODP. Um, and then the development academy started up and I played in the development academy. Then I went to college. Um, but the system nowadays is a little bit different. I know that the development academy kind of went away and it's turning into, uh, more MLS academies and that's more the route, but just being able to play on teams that get you exposure to different, uh, coaches and, uh, get to travel and play in tournaments around the country is always a good way to get seen. Yeah, it's funny that you say it because I just made ODP too. Ah, congrats. What region Thank are you? you? Uh, Virginia. Okay. I think that might have been the same region. I was region two in Ohio. So I think Virginia might have been in the same one. I think so. Um, what sacrifices did you make through your life to be able to become a professional goalkeeper? Yeah, a lot of people don't know about the sacrifices that players have to go through. They just, like, they believe that the players get all the breaks. But, uh, I mean, some of the big ones were I would always sacrifice weekends with my friends because I'd be going to tournaments. I'd be traveling to play. Um, I remember in high school I skipped my senior prom because I had a soccer tournament in Indiana. So instead of going to prom, like, all of my friends, I decided that I wanted to go to my soccer tournament. Um, in college and as pros, I've missed weddings. I've missed some of my best friend's weddings. Uh, I've missed funerals. I've missed a lot of things. And all of it is because as a pro, you kind of have to sacrifice a lot to continue to play. And uh, a lot of people don't understand that those sacrifices have to be made. Yeah. Yeah. You have to miss so many things to keep on getting better. Yep. If you weren't a professional goalie, what else would you have wanted to be? So I went to college to become a doctor. Uh, I was a biology pre-med, uh, but soccer was always number one in my heart. So I followed that for as long as I could. And I mean, if I didn't have the professional soccer i would probably be some sort of doctor i hope i hope i would have made it into med school yeah um if i didn't play if i didn't play soccer right now i used to snowboard okay so i'd probably snowboard still i was terrible at snowboarding <laughs>
I started when I was four. Wow. I tried maybe twice, and I think I made it down the hill one time in both of those tries. The rest, I would always fall down. Um, what have you done on the field and off the field that you're most proud of? Uh, on the field, I, I mean, I'm just proud to be where I'm at right now. Um, I'm proud to say that I'm in my eighth year as a professional soccer player. But the things I'm most proud of all come off the field. Uh, being a professional soccer player gives you the ability to have a platform to do good in your community. And I really take pride in what I do off the field with the different um, organizations and the different charities that I work with. Uh, I think those are, those are more important to me than what I do on the field. That's, that's awesome. Um, what goalies or soccer players inspired you to want to be a professional? So growing up, the goalkeepers that I looked up to were Brad Friedel and Casey Keller. Um, Brad Friedel was the number one for the U.S. men's national team. Uh, he was playing over in England when I was growing up, but he was also from the same area of Ohio as I was. So in his off seasons, he would always come back to Ohio and put on soccer camps. So I was able to go to those soccer camps and be around him and listen to him. And he would give us advice about what it meant to become a pro and what it took to be there. So, uh, Fortunately for me, I was able to go with ODP over to England and see him play for Blackburn Rovers. So he was one of the, the major inspirations for me. That's uh, My inspiration is actually David De Gea. That's a good one. Yeah. I like his playing style. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely grown a lot, too, uh, in his professional career. A lot of people didn't think that he was going to have the career he did. But the past couple of years, he's been one of the top five goalkeepers in the world. So. Mm -hmm. um, why are your favorite gloves to wear in net and why? So I am sponsored by HO Soccer. It is a glove company out of Spain. I was with them for the first four years of my career, and then I wore Under Armour, and now I'm back with HO. Um, they're my favorite gloves just because of the quality and the the personalization that they go into the gloves. Uh, I like the feel of all the gloves that I've used. And personally, I'm just biased that way. So. Um, is there a save that you've made that really sticks out in your mind? Um, probably the biggest save that I'll always remember was in my professional debut. Uh, the very first save I made was a penalty kick that I caused. Uh, I came out and I tackled the attacker and they got a penalty and it was in my first ever professional game <laughs> and I ended up saving the PK. So, uh, that's something I can look back on and be very thankful that I made the PK save instead of tackling someone in the box and then giving up the goal in my very first game. So that one um, I'll remember for a while. Yeah. Um, the same thing happened to me. It was the first game of the season. I got a yellow card. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I got away with it somehow. I didn't get the yellow card, but they gave the PK. Yeah, they made a rule. They said you can't get a red card and a penalty anymore, but you yeah. can still get a yellow and a penalty. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say. That's better that way. Good thing I didn't yeah. do it. Um, what advice would you give a young goalkeeper like me that wants to play at a professional level? Uh. The best advice I could give is just to continue playing and continue loving the game, doing as much as you can. Um, it's important to play every position. It's important to enjoy the game. If you're not enjoying the game, it's very difficult. Um, but just uh, taking every opportunity that, that you get and showing that you truly love the game and that you're capable of sacrificing things to get to the next level. Yeah. Um, now, is there any questions that you have for me? So the major one for me is, what is Keeper for a Cure? Okay. Um, so Keeper for a Cure is, is um, so it's a website that me and my dad made and one of my coach's wife. And so we raise money for uh, to help people. And this year we're doing breast cancer again. And okay. so... 
we all started off. Me and my dad were in the pool at John Bush camp. And uh, I was like, I really want to help you all out. Um, so my dad said, I'll make as I'll help you in any way I possibly can. Then he told me I had people in my family who had breast cancer, and one of them died from it. So I uh, wanted to help people out so they didn't have the same experience that family member had. That's amazing. I mean, myself, I've had three or four family members all battle breast cancer. So hearing that story and hearing what you're doing with Keeper for a Cure, that's amazing, especially at such a young age. Yeah. Now, Brad, thank you so much for coming on 10 Questions with the Pro. I really appreciate your time and had fun chatting. Remember to check out our show and all our other shows on our YouTube channel. We are also on Spotify and iTunes podcast. Just search Keep a Free Cure and remember to subscribe and like. Also, check out our other new website, keepafreecure.com. I'm Brady Krizowitz, and my guest was Brad Stuber. Thank you for tuning in to 10 Questions with the Pro.